Hi, this is Ming Yao from Ozen Engineering and in this video I will be looking at how we can simulate shape memory alloys or nitinol type of material in ANSYS Workbench Mechanical. Um, ANSYS has a number of different shape memory alloy models available. Actually, there's three of them. So uh, let's take a look at what's available here. So here is, uh, let, let's, let's call a, create a new material called nitinol and um, here are the options. There's a super elastic model and a shape memory effect model. There are actually two shape memory effect models. I'm going to start with the super elastic model because this is the easiest one and here are the information we need to input in order to use this model. Uh, if we go into the ANSYS help and find the shape memory alloy section, you can see there's some information about this. So this is the Young's modulus and we have Poisson's ratio. So this is Let's go to millimeters and um, uh, MKS units, so 60,000 and 0.36 is the Poisson's ratio. And then we have uh, the transformation strains. If we go into the picture here, it tells you there is the austenite to martensite transformation, start and finish. And then backwards, so Martin side to austenite start and Martin side to austenite finish, and then the maximum uh, strain uh, for the transformation. So this is the information uh, we can put in, and we have an example material here. So I'm going to, I'm going to just use the ANSYS example. So we're going to start at 520 and go to 600. Then uh, on the down, downward slope, we go from 300 down to 200. The next one is the maximum uh, strain, transformation strain. So that's 7%. And zero, zero, this, is the, this, is, this value here is the difference between uh, compression and tension, the, the ratio of t tension versus compression. And finally, this one is the elastic modulus of the Martin site fa uh, phase. So this slope doesn't have to equal this slope. As you can see, the slope uh, on the on the large strain side is different than the slope on the on the other side. So I'm going to make this the same for now. Sixty thousand, and let's uh, go ahead and set up this model. Okay, now we can go ahead and set up the simulation. Here we have ANSYS Mechanical. We have a bar of nitinol that's about 20 millimeters in length. And uh, let's go ahead and assign the material. So the super elastic nitinol model only works on solid elements, not beams. I'm going to have to suppress this one. Generate a mesh. And that looks fine. And let's go ahead and set up the simulation. So we're going to have fixed support on one side and uh, I'm going to actually do a four step analysis so we're going to stretch it let it return to normal compress it and let it return to normal so that's going to make it a four step analysis and uh, we're going to turn large to keep large deflection off here even though the material is not linear with large deflection on we're going to be reformi reformulating the stiffness matrix and when we're doing the compression it's very possible that this will buckle so um, to prevent that avoid that problem we're going to treat this as a small deflection problem even though it's going to be moving quite a bit uh, add some displacement we're going to move this only in the y direction so we're going to set the x and z directions to zero and this is what we're going to do. We're going to start um, x is zero two. Let me adjust this. This should be not a tabular but a constant. Okay and the y-axis will be a tabular data here so on the Y, we're going to start at zero and we're going to pull on it by two millimeters. So that's about 10% strain. 
Uh, maybe we should do three millimeters. And then we're going to go back to zero. We're going to go to minus three and go back to zero. So if we go back to our material property, you notice that the the maximum transformation strain is 7%. So we're going to do about 15%. So that, that'll be double. And hopefully we'll see some see the, the, the Martin site curves as well. The analysis settings by default are going to be program control. So we're going to turn on auto time stepping. Initial, let's do 10, 10, and uh, a very large number. So within each one of these step, uh, steps, we should get 10 points. It seems a little low, so maybe I'll set it up to, to 20 points instead. So we can see that changing in, in, the, in, the, in the structure. So let's go ahead and solve the simulation. Uh, usually we monitor the force convergence. Okay, the simulation is completed. We can look at basic things like deformation and stress. Oh, I think we're scaling up the deformation a little too much. That's deformation and stress. Okay, but what, re what we really want to plot is force versus deflection curve. So I can plot the force here by dragging the, the displacement uh, low into the solution branch. And that's a force curve. And really we're only interested in force in the y direction. But we can chart this. So going to home here, we can put in a chart. And the objects will be force and displacement. We're going to have um, displacement in the y direction in, on the x-axis. And we're going to not display a lot of this. Otherwise, it tends to display everything. And basically, we're only going to display the force in the y-axis. And here we have our very typical night null curve. It's uh, we'll probably zoom in here a little bit to uh, maybe I've pulled it out too far. Maybe two two two, uh, two millimeter would have been fine. So let's go ahead and well before I do that, you can see the the, the angles are the same between here and here. And now we can try a few different things. So first I'm gonna going to change this to two millimeters out and minus two millimeters in. And uh, let's go ahead and change some of the materials. So on the, night, on the shape memory alloy, the super elastic model side, we can obviously change the stress, the transformation stress for the four corners. But we can also change this to, let's say, 30,000. So let's say the Martin site uh, transfer stiffness is a half of the austenite stiffness. Going back into this model, let's go ahead and run the simulation again. So here you can see that the stiffness changed dramatically, so from 60,000 to 30,000, because we've adjusted that value here. And now we can also try out the difference between compression and uh, tension. So sometimes the compressive behavior is very different than the tensile behavior. So here I'm going to go back to my materials and adjust this value to, to have a 20% difference between compression and tension. And you can read into the help to see exactly what that does here. Okay, take a look at the force convergence chart. You can see that uh, now we have a much larger. Um, so the, the maximum force here is 712, and here is 12, uh, 712. Here is 
1,280, and the, the, the kind of size of the compression area is, is much wider uh, because, we, because we adjusted that, that, uh, that factor that controls the difference between tension, which is over here, and compression. So that kind of rounds out the capabilities of our shape super elastic model. We have we can have different stiffnesses between the austenite and martensite faces. We can have different tension compression uh, values, and we can have different um, different uh, tra transformation stresses from austenite to martensite uh, start finish, as well as martensite to austenite start and finish. And we can define the maximum strain, which is again outlined in the help menu right here so uh, it's pretty good it has all almost all of the features we we want in in uh, in our shape memory alloy and it runs really fast and converges well so it's a great model to use uh, in the next video i'll be talking about the shape memory effects um, and this is an, another more complicated model and there's actually two two variations of that so i'll be discussing that in more detail in future videos Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, if you are interested in modeling shape memory alloy, night null material, and you don't know how to do it, please contact us at, at uh, ozeninc.com. Thanks, and have a great day.